Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'll be talking about AWS Cloud Practitioner Certification Real Exam Questions Part 7. So this is a series which I have created. So I'll leave the link in the description box for part 1 to part 6. You can go and watch those videos as well in order to make sure that you don't miss any important question and answers. So without any further ado, let's get started. So now the question that we're going to discuss is question number 81 and the question says a company runs its workload on premises. The company wants to forecast the cost of running a large application on AWS. Which AWS service or tool can the company use to obtain this information? And the options are AWS pricing calculator, AWS budgets, AWS trusted advisor and D cost explorer. And the correct option over here is A AWS pricing calculator. Now let's look into the next uh, question, question number 82. A company wants to eliminate the need to guess infrastructure capacity before deployments. The company also wants to spend its budgets on cloud resources only as a company uses the resources. Which advantage of the AWS cloud matches the company's requirements? And the options are A, reliability, global reach, economies of scale, and option D, pay as you go pricing. And the correct option is D, pay as you go pricing. Now let's look into the next question, question number 83, which AWS service supports a hybrid architecture that gives users the ability to extend AWS infrastructure, AWS services, APIs and tools to data centers, co-location environments or on-premises facilities and the options are A, AWS no mobile, B, AWS local zones, C, AWS outposts, D, AWS Fargate and the correct option is C, AWS outposts. Now let's look into question number 84. A company has a physical tape library to store data backups. The tape library is running out of space. The company needs to extend the tapes library's capacity to the AWS cloud. Which AWS service should the company use to meet this requirement? And the options are A, Amazon Elastic Block Store, B, Amazon S3, Amazon Elastic File System, EFS, and then the last option is AWS Storage Gateway. And the correct option is D, AWS Storage Gateway. Now let's look into the next question, question number 85. An online uh, retail company has seasonal sales spikes several times a year, primarily around holidays. Demand is lower at other times. The company finds it difficult to predict the increasing infrastructure demand for each season. Which advantages of moving to the AWS cloud would most benefit the company? And you have to choose two options. And the options are A, global footprint, B, elasticity, C, AWS service quotas, D, AWS shared responsibility model, E, pay as you go pricing. And the correct options are B and E, which is elasticity and pay as you go pricing. Now let's look into question number 86. And the question is, which AWS service can be used to turn text into lifelike speech? And the options are A, Amazon Polly, B, Amazon Kendra, C, Amazon Recognition, and D, Amazon Connect. And the correct option is A, Amazon Polly. So basically, you should have the idea about all the services and what kind of services perform what kind of stuff. So you should know about that in order to clear this particular exam. So now let's look into the next question, question number 87. Which AWS service or tool can be used to capture information about inbound and outbound traffic in an Amazon VPC? And the options are A, VPC flow logs, B, Amazon inspector, C, VPC endpoint services, D, NAT gateway. And the correct option is A, VPC flow logs. So basically, VPC flow logs is used to capture information about inbound and outbound traffic in an Amazon VPC. Let's look into question number 88. A company wants to ensure that two Amazon EC2 instances are in separate data centers with minimal communication latency between the data centers. How can the company meet this requirement? And the options are A, place the EC2 instances in two separate AWS regions connected with VPC pairing connection. Option B, place the EC2 instances in two separate availability zones within the same AWS region. Option C, place one EC2 instance on premises and the other in an AWS region, then connect them by using AWS VPN connection. And then option D, place both EC2 instances in a placement group for dedicated bandwidth. Now let's look into the correct option. And the correct option is B, place the EC2 instances in two separate availability zones within the same AWS region. Question number 89. In which situations should a company create an IAM user instead of an IAM role? Choose two options. And the options are A, when an application that runs on Amazon EC2 instances requires access to other AWS services. 
Option B, when the company creates AWS access credentials for individuals. Option C, when the company creates an application that runs on a mobile phone that makes requests to AWS. Option D, when the company needs to add users to IAM groups. Option E, when users are authenticated in the corporate network and want to be able to use AWS without having to sign in a second time. The correct options are B and D, that is when the company creates AWS access credentials for individuals. And D, when the company needs to add users to IAM groups. Question number 19, which AWS services should a company use to read and write data that changes frequently? You have to choose two options. Option A, Amazon S3 Glacier. Option B, Amazon RDS. Option C, AWS Snowball. Option D, Amazon Redshift. Option E, Amazon Elastic File System, EFS. Now let's look into the correct option and the correct options are B and E, which is Amazon RDS and Amazon Elastic File System. Let's look into question number 91, which AWS service is used to provide encryption for Amazon EBS and the options are A, AWS Certificate Manager, B, AWS Systems Manager, C, AWS KMS, which is Key Management System and then D, AWS Config. And the correct option is C, AWS, KMS. The next question, question number 92, which AWS services makes use of global edge locations? You have to choose two options. And the options are A, AWS Fargate, B, Amazon CloudFront, C, AWS Global Accelerator, D, AWS Wavelength, and E, Amazon VPC. Let's look into the correct options. And the correct options are B and C, which is Amazon CloudFront and AWS Global Accelerator. Next question, question number 93. A company is operating several factories where, where it builds products. The company needs the ability to process data, store data, and run applications with local system interdependencies that require low latency. Which AWS service should the company use to meet these requirements? And the options are A, AWS IoT Greengrass, B, AWS Lambda, C, AWS Outpost, D, AWS Snow Edge, Snowball Edge. And the correct option is C, AWS Outpost. Now let's look into the next question, question number 94. Which of the following is a recommended design principle for AWS Cloud architecture and the options are a design tightly coupled components b build a single application component that can handle all the application functionality c make large changes on fewer iterations to reduce chances of failure and d avoid monolithic architecture by segmenting workloads and let's see what is the correct option and the correct option is d avoid monolithic architecture by segmenting workloads Question number 95, a company is designing its AWS workload so that components can be updated regularly and so that changes can be made in small reversible increments. Which pillar of AWS well-architected framework does this design support? And the options are A, security, B, performance efficiency, C, operational excellence, and D, reliability. And the correct option is C, operational excellence. Now let's look into the next question, question number 96. Which of the following acts as an instance level firewall to control inbound and outbound access? And the options are A, network access control list, B, security groups, C, AWS trusted advisor, and D, virtual private gateways. And the correct option is B, security groups. Let's look into the next question, question number 97. A company has a workload that will run continuously for one year. The workload cannot tolerate service interruptions. Which Amazon EC2 purchasing option will be most cost effective? And the options are A, all upfront reserved instances, B, partial upfront reserved instances, C, dedicated instances, and D, on-demand instances. And the correct option is A, all upfront reserved instances. Let's look into the next question, question number 98. Which AWS service helps protect against DDoS attacks? And the options are A, AWS Shield, B, Amazon Inspector, C, Amazon Guard Duty, and D, Amazon Detective. And the correct option is A, AWS Shield. Let's look into question number 99. Using AWS Config to record, audit, and evaluate changes to AWS resources to enable traceability is an example of which AWS well-architected framework pillar? And the options are A, security, B, operational excellence, C, performance efficiency, and D, cost optimization. And the correct option is A, security. Now let's look into question number 101. Which AWS service can be used to decouple applications? Option A, AWS Config. 
B. Amazon Simple Q Service, C. AWS Batch, and D. Amazon Simple Email Service. And the correct option is B. Amazon Simple Q Service. Let's look into the next question. That is question number hundred and two. And uh, the question is, which disaster recovery option is the least expensive? And the options are A. Warm standby, B. Multi site, C. Backup and restore, D. Pilot light. And the correct option is C. Backup and restore. Now let's look into the next question. Question number hundred and three. Which type of AWS storage is ephemeral and is deleted when an Amazon EC2 instance is stopped or terminated? And the options are A, Amazon Elastic Block Store (EBS), Amazon EC2 Instance Store (C), Amazon Elastic File System (EFS), and D, Amazon S3. And the correct option is B, Amazon EC2 Instance Store. Now let's look into question number hundred and four. Which of the following is a characteristic of a AWS account root user? And the options are A. The root user is the only user that can be configured with multi-factor authentication. B. The root user is the only user that can access the AWS management console. The root user is the first sign-in identity that is available when an AWS account is created. D. The root user has a password that cannot be changed. And the correct option is C. That the root user is the first sign-in identity that is available when an AWS account is created. Now let's look into question number one hundred and five. A company hosts an application on an Amazon EC2 instance. The EC2 instance needs to access several AWS resources, including Amazon S3 and Amazon DynamoDB. What is the most operationally efficient solution to delegate permissions? The options are A. Create an IAM role with the required permissions. Attach the role to the EC2 instance. B. Create an IAM user and use its access key and secret access key in the application. C. Create an IAM user and use its access key and secret access key to create a CLI profile in the EC2 instance. And option D. Create an IAM role with the required permissions. Attach the role to the administrative IAM user. And the correct option is A. Create an IAM role with the required permissions. Attach the role to the EC2 instance. Now let's look into the next question. Question number hundred and six. Which of the following is a component of the AWS global infrastructure? And the options are A. Amazon Alexa, B. AWS Regions, C. Amazon Lightsail, and D. AWS Organizations. And the correct answer is B. AWS Regions. Next question hundred and seven. What is the purpose of having an internet gateway within a VPC? And the options are A. To create a VPC connection to the VPC. Option B to allow communication between the VPC and the internet. Option C to impose bandwidth constraints on the internet traffic. Option D to load balanced traffic from the internet across Amazon EC2 instances. And the correct option is B to allow communication between the VPC and the internet. Now let's look into question number hundred and eight. Which AWS service allows users to download security and compliance reports about the AWS infrastructure on demand? And the options are A. Amazon Guard Duty, B. AWS Security Hub, C. AWS Artifact, and D. AWS Shield. And the correct option is C. AWS Artifact. Now let's look into question number hundred and nine. A pharmaceutical company operates its infrastructure in a single AWS region. The company has thousands of VPCs in a various AWS accounts that it wants to interconnect. Which AWS service or feature should the company use to help simplify management and reduce operational cost? And the options are A, VPC endpoint, B, AWS Direct Connect, C, AWS Transit Gateway, and D, VPC Peering. And the correct option is C, AWS Transit Gateway. Now let's look into question number hundred and ten. A company is planning an infrastructure deployment to the AWS cloud. Before the deployment, the company wants a cost estimate for running the infrastructure. Which AWS service or feature can provide this information? And the options are A. Cost Explorer, B. AWS Trusted Advisor, C. AWS Cost and Usage Report, D. AWS Pricing Calculator. And the correct option is D. AWS Pricing Calculator. So that's it for today. I hope this video was informative for all of you. So give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me and it motivates me to create such informative content for all of you. Thank you and all the best for the exam. Bye bye.